Lee walked into the tent of his boss, Ben Young, a headstrong but fair leader of the Rough Unchained group. It's good to see you, Lee, Young said. Likewise, boss. Donald said that you had a task for me? Yes. There are rumors Platinum Ring has fallen apart. People that used to live there have been running away. Some have come here, while others have been refugeed into other camps. That was surprising. Platinum Ring was one of the three largest groups left in America after the virus epidemic of 2126. Usually when groups fell apart, it was small ones, run by deserters or others that broke off from larger groups. The breakdown of Platinum Ring and thousands of people leaving its enclosures was going to lead to chaos for a while. Lee said, Ain't that something. So let me guess, you want to go down there and check out what's going on? Oh, not only that. I need you to figure out how those people died. Was it some revolt or a disease outbreak? No. And that's the thing. According to the refugees, there was no revolt or disease. The thousands of people are dead. The few refugees that escaped said it was a slaughter. That Dante the Red has gone mad. Dante was a respected figure and was well known. He led Platinum Ring for a long time, but one thing he was not known for was his violence. So that was odd, to say the least. In a world like this, though, everybody had to make that cruel decision, just like everybody else at some point. But slaughter? Lee couldn't believe that. He had to see it for himself. Sounds interesting to me. All right, I'll take the task, boss. Lee's travel to the compound was made easier thanks to his mountain bicycle. They had cars and motorcycles, but those were only used for large-scale skirmishes or raids. Besides, a car would never get anywhere near the Platinum Ring, and a motorcycle was a megaphone to his location. He hated being seen and he preferred the secrecy of the shadows, like any good predator. Lee crushed the flowers and shrubs with his boots as the top of the wall peeked out over the hillside. The closer he got, the lower he got. He looked up at the 40-foot concrete wall surrounding the inner grounds. This was the Platinum Ring, but it was a disgrace. Lee's feet crunched into the plastic wrappers left on the outer reaches. Indiscipline must have struck before the final collapse, but what was more striking were the marks of blood and torn clothes. Especially with the clothes, there were so many scrapes and ripped pieces of fabric. To make it more horrifying were all the footprints. There were a lot of them all going in many directions. Lee assumed that it could have been a stampede or a riot. All of this gave Lee an uneasy feeling, but he pushed that to the back of his mind. He stepped towards the wall with confidence. A distant gunshot made him freeze. Lee looked around. Nothing was displaced by any nearby shot, so it wasn't a sniper bullet. It looked like the party was happening inside the compound. Lee moved toward the wall. Using a grappling hook, he scaled the wall and found himself inside. To be honest, getting over the wall was too easy, but it was the inner layer of the platinum ring that was going to be difficult to navigate. More distant gunshots. But where was the shooting coming from? It was pitch black except for a few faraway lights beaming from a few of the barns around here. Lee eased the heavy beat of his heart with suppressed breaths, giving away his position when he could barely see himself would be a sin. The lights in the distance were still a godsend and gave him enough hope. He stared from the shadow of the wall into the fallen fields of green. Maize and banana trees laid on the earth like trash. Many fruit trees were ransacked as their leaves crackled under his boots. Wayward oranges and apples bounced out of the way as he moved into the connecting fields. No one would dare destroy America's most prosperous resource of crops without running into problems with the other groups. But there were no enforcers to stop thieves. There are a lot of barns around him. This annoyed him, for he was going to have to clear each one on his way to the center of this community. Someone could easily hide inside and attack from there. Lee breathed out and continued until the wind picked up. An odor made Lee slow down. It wasn't the scent of rotting fruit, but a deplorable one that had phased between death or something worse. Lee lowered himself into a brush of maize behind a tall birch tree. 
There was a fallen banana tree several feet in front of him, and the leaves of that tree flopped up. They almost hid the head of the kid that passed by. Lee's eyes narrowed. There were a couple options he could take, and hitting the kid was one of them. But right now, he needed information, and that kid was his best option. Lee lowered himself and swiftly followed the kid. The kid wasn't a fool, nor was he as young as Lee thought. The kid was a black-haired teenager. Lee snuck up behind a tree and went ahead of the kid. He never caught Lee's presence when he put the gun to his head. Don't move. Wait! The boy yelled and fell over in shock. Lee froze and looked at the kid. This kid was harmless. Begrudgingly, Lee pulled down his rifle. Lee said, Hey, kid, where are you from? The young man looked around. Lee narrowed his eyes and raised his rifle to the boy's face. Wait! No, no, wait! Quiet! Who else is around here? Come out right now! Lee's intuition was right, for a woman exited out of the bushes right behind Lee, and in her hand was a spiked hammer with a long staff. That would have been a bloody end to his life if she got to him. She was a red-haired woman, so he predicted her possible fury was legit. But it was those golden eyes of hers that struck him differently. He never saw eyes so bright. Lee glared at the woman and said, All right, miss, drop the weapon. Anybody else I need to know about? Come on, start talking. I don't got a lot of patience. Which group do you work for? She asked. He glared at her. You're not in the position to be asking questions, miss. Now start talking. If you came here for food or supplies, you're out of luck. The escaping residents took all that. Lee asked. And you didn't go with them? That depends on if the second reason is why you're here. Are you here for the Titan Project? If that's the case, then it's close. And that's why I'm still here. Titan? What are we talking about here? A living weapon. Lee froze at hearing that, and he wasn't someone that was awestruck often. A distant shot echoed and shook him out of that fog. They weren't safe here. He swallowed and gestured his head at the kid. Get the kid up. You follow me, let's go somewhere quiet. Because I'm pretty sure our location ain't safe no more. So, he disarmed her of the hammer and a pistol. They made their way to one of the barns. There was no light, but the redhead quickly gave them light from her lighter. Lee said, Keep the light from the windows. She smiled and said, Don't worry, there's nobody in the fields. It's the lab where the war is at. War over what? A monstrosity. English, miss, and stop with the parables. It was a science project that our leader Dante wanted them to do. It uses a new strain from the germ that killed off most of humanity to mutate people, give them abilities. The idea was to make their own super soldiers so that they could get an advantage over the other groups in the United States of America and also to aid his plan to take over the West. So we're talking Canada, Latin America, and possibly in the future, South America. Lee never considered Dante a dictator or a crazed fool. But if what she said was true, not only was this crazy, this was straight up evil, to say the least. Lee asked, Let me guess, something bad happened. Yes, they were attacked. Nobody was supposed to find out, but somebody did. But it wasn't a normal attack. They were attacked from within. You could almost say it was like a coup. The residents wanted no part of it and left. And you? I'm a scout for the Cloud Union. I came here with a team that is now dead. My name's Aaliyah. Kid's named Virgil. And he was left here and is too scared to leave. Actually, he's uh, not mentally okay. I'm not sure with what. This was a bad number of problems Lee didn't need. Leave with your new friend. <sighs> I'm going with you. Miss, there is no way in hell I'm going to have you breathing down my neck. Either you leave, or I shoot you and the boy dead. She shivered, but stood her ground. Aaliyah shook her head. No, I can't. I go back without a vial of that thing. My boss is going to kill me. I must come back with something. So, I'm kind of stuck just like the kid. So I'll tell you what, I just want a vial. You can get yourself some too. I won't mention you to my boss, you don't mention me to your boss. Deal? Lee didn't care and raised his rifle to her face. She backed up and raised her hands. Hold on! I've been in the lab, I swear! Let me guide you! This woman was too loud. Lee's finger touched the trigger. No! Virgil stood in front of her, blocking him from killing her. 
what the boy didn't realize was that Lee's rifle was so powerful, it could go through both of them with enough killing power to end this tense situation. But for some reason, Lee couldn't pull the trigger. It was one thing to kill a person from afar. He's done that all his life. But this close, especially when they were unarmed, he couldn't do it. Lee cursed his sentimentality. In this world, being sentimental was the best way to get betrayed or your throat slit. Lee pulled down the gun. Call me Lee, but you better not betray me or hold me back or get me killed by making any sound because we have hundreds of yards to cover and I don't know who's out there. Aaliyah chuckled nervously. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, um, right. Follow me? Something told him this woman was lying, but he could not confirm it and he was not exactly in the mood to kill somebody that he could not judge without evidence. Lee didn't like this at all, but he agreed to it, and in a small part of his heart, hope still burned. He was not sure what was going on in this demented place, but as they kept going through the ruined fields, the gunshots became louder. Thankfully, the woman was well-trained, and the kid was not so bad, even though he stepped on a few branches from time to time. They came out of the grassy fields and onto the concrete and stone streets of Platinum Ring's metropolis. It was amazing to think thousands of souls used to live here, and the place was grand indeed. Houses and buildings were built of wood yet stood tall in cube-like blocks with surrounding bridge paths, some of which connected over the derelict streets. There were a lot of dead bodies. Based on their clothing, Lee was sure they were outbounders from different groups. The only thing missing was their guns. The lab was close, and huge too, with a surrounding fence. Aaliyah said, It's electric. If you want to get in, we have to go around and go through the opening the Mercury guys created. Mercury deserters. The bane of everybody in Western America. Them being here was going to be a nightmare, but Lee pushed that to the back of his mind. The gunshot that sailed past his head almost joined it. Down! Lee hissed as they got behind a building. Virgil and Aaliyah flattened as the dull silence haunted them worse than any boogeyman. Lee glanced behind the gunshot hole. Based on the trajectory, it came from a higher elevation. Lee pushed his head around the corner and tried to find the sniper. Another gunshot. Lee pulled his head back and steeled his body, which threatened to break apart. His heart raced and blocked all sounds with its incessant drum. Aaliyah's whispers were nothing more than distorted screeches. Either the sniper was inside the upper floor of the labs or one of the buildings surrounding it. Lee had to find their location. Lee. Lee turned his head around and watched Aaliyah's mouth moving. He couldn't read her lips. Lee didn't need to. He could see it in her eyes. No. What do you mean, no? Let me help you. There was no way Lee could trust this woman. No matter how well-intentioned she sounded on the farmstead, it never made any sense that she wanted to go back to this madhouse. She had a pointed objective and agenda. Aaliyah was willing to risk her life and even Virgil's life for it. Besides, how could she help him anyways? Her pistol couldn't shoot further than 50 yards, and the hammer was useless against a sniper bullet. Lee moved to the other side of the wall and peeked his head out. Another gunshot, but Lee pulled his head back just in time. He hated this. Lee pulled out the gun and gave it to her, but she held out her empty palm as she glanced at the other weapon, then back at Lee. This woman could not be serious. Lee said, What the hell are you going to do with the hammer? She smiled. Watch me. Lee growled at himself but gave it to her. Aaliyah whispered to Virgil before running across the street. Gunshots rang out as the sniper tried to take her out, but she rolled into another alley. Taking this opportunity, Lee grabbed Virgil by the arm and they sped to the other side. They hoped Aaliyah pulled enough of the sniper's attention to avoid detection. If so, the bastard had to watch two different fighting positions now. Lee told Virgil to stay put and moved through the shadows until he neared the fence. That's when he caught movement. From a window, the light glint identified the bastard to Lee. Aaliyah ran through a hole in the fence and that bastard in the window moved as they fired on Aaliyah. Lee swiftly lifted his rifle, adjusted for distance, and fired. A yelp echoed as the bastard fell through the window. Lee inhaled deeply, and the weight lifted off his shoulders to know that was done. 
he got Virgil to follow him and looked for Aaliyah. Gunshots and screams rang out as they entered through the front door of this decrepit lab. Every five feet was a dead body. Carrying the kid through this massacre made Lee's chest pound with the pain of terror. Where was Aaliyah? She ran off and left them as soon as she got her weapons back. Lee knew he could not trust her. Aaliyah, where are you going? That female voice sounded close. Virgil made a sound and shrunk back. Was that someone the kid feared? Lee wished they could rest, but they needed to move forward. Lee went through the corridors and stopped at one end where a bunch of outbounders prostrated with their guns. He inhaled deeply, steeled himself, and spun around the corner, guns ablaze. Lee took out the group, but caught a glimpse of Aaliyah running as she sped down another hall. He ran after her down a series of corridors and came into a large room of fallen tables riddled with bullets. He paused and listened. At the end of that room, he saw a glimpse of her hair. Lee called after her. Aaliyah! She jumped up from behind a table and waved at him erratically. Lee stared in confusion. A creak made him look to the side, but the clank of the revolver's hammer made him freeze. A strange woman with dreadful eyes of white glared at Lee. Who are you? I don't remember you. Lee cursed himself for getting caught like this. He needed to escape. Lee could push her arm away since she was this close, but with a gun that powerful, it was a close call if he didn't lose a piece of his head. Or he could lie. She seemed to be working with the Mercury nutcases. Yeah, Brandon sent me with the second team after you guys took too long. The new woman narrowed her eyes at him. My brother killed Brandon. Lee's heart skipped a beat as her face flexed into rage, but he already threw his elbow up into her arm. The revolver fired and left his ears ringing, but his head unscathed. She grabbed him by the collar and threw him into the ceiling before he pummeled down to a table. Lee's heart pounded in his head as much as his back and shoulders burned for life. What kind of pain was this, he begged. How the hell did she do that? Lee groaned and turned up his head to find out that woman was not normal any more than she was a monster. Her eyes glowed as her jaws and arms spread out into spurned spikes, piercing out from the breakage of the skin. Lee stared in horror. This woman flung one arm and sent a table flying as Aaliyah jumped out of the way. Lee's joints cried for mercy, but they would have to wait. He had to cut down this woman, but he could barely move. Lee labored up into a crouch as the woman stomped towards him. Virgil ran up behind her with a steel rod. Lee shouted, Don't, Virgil! She froze. Virgil swung the rod into the back of her head, which pissed her off more, but it was enough of a distraction. Lee fired into her head. She rushed him with her blood-stained head and smacked him into the floor. His back slid against the cracked glass. Her hand became a spear of barded spikes that she was about to skewer him with. Lee's eyes widened in horror. A loud thud vibrated and blood splattered over him when her head got bashed in from behind. Lee froze in his moist disgust, laying in a sea of blood. Virgil jumped on him, which made his back cry for mercy, but he couldn't hate the kid, for he meant well. He groaned and winced as Virgil moaned and tried to wipe Lee's face. Aaliyah came over with her blood-stained hammer and asked, Are you guys all right? Lee spat out blood. Of course not. Where the hell were you? Aaliyah cringed her jawline as she paused. Sorry I left you guys behind, but we aren't done yet. Dante is still around. His people and her people are still going at it. Who is her? Who was that? Dante's sister, Pauline. She was the one who brought Mercury into this. She was trying to overthrow her brother. Ugh, this is ridiculous. He lifted himself up and groaned in pain. God damn it. Dante has been protecting the vials. If I can get you one, I can use it to heal your wounds. Lee pointed at Pauline's body. And turn into that? Hell no, I'm good. I like being human. Just show me where this blasted Dante is so I can put a bullet in his head. They continued their hunt, and the deeper they went, the more random goons they ran into. Aaliyah knew the way, but she seemed too determined to get what she wanted. The closer they got, the more anxious she was. 
Lee was just plowing through, ugly mug after another, knocking down each Mercury deserter like a pinball. Carrying around Virgil made this even more difficult. All he did was shiver and moan in distress. The kid lost that calmness once the gunshots rang out. Lee was struggling with so many enemies from different positions. He needed to lean on his pistol more, especially when they got too close for comfort. For him, it was a job. For Aaliyah, it was important to stop Dante. He wondered why. Was it because of the danger of this mad project, or was it more personal than Aaliyah was willing to say? They soon neared their objective, and only one door separated them from it. Lee's kick bashed down the door, and before them was the great leader Dante. But instead of looking like a regal man of stature, he was a living, monstrous entity, straight out of an inescapable nightmare. Blood was everywhere. It covered his white gown from the shoulders to the ankles. Lee was not sure whose blood that was, but he could guess it probably belonged to any of the many bodies littered on the floor. Oh my! Aaliyah, you have returned to me, Dante said, smiling from cheek to cheek. Lee flexed his jaw in rage as he glared at this liar. Aaliyah, do you care to explain or do you want him to do it? Dante's smile disappeared as he turned to Lee. Oh, so you made friends with our enemies, Aaliyah said. Go to hell, Dante. You don't control me or anybody else here anymore. Dante made one step. Lee cocked back his rifle. One more step and you will be in hell. And can someone please explain what's going on right now? Aaliyah said. I used to live here. Of course you did. Why did you not leave? I'm patient zero for the Titan project. Virgil is patient 212. This was insane. She had to be joking or something, but from the looks of it, she wasn't. What happened to the other patients between the both of you? Aaliyah pursed her lips and her eyes swirled with fear within their depths. Lee fired the gun. Dante flew five feet from the power of his rifle. Aaliyah and Virgil jumped back in shock. He decided no more questions needed to be asked. Lee breathed out in annoyance. <sighs> Virgil screamed and threw around his arms wildly. Aaliyah shushed and tried to calm him down. Shh, shh, easy, easy. Come on. It's okay. She wrapped her arms around his head. Virgil said, N Not yet. What? Lee asked. Virgil stepped back and pointed in front of him. Lee spun around, but it was too late. He got hit and flew across the room. Lee hit the wall and groaned from the pain. Lee! A burst of pain gripped him as he moved. His fingers fidgeted, and that's when he felt the emptiness of being disarmed. He hated being without his rifle. Lee tried to get up, but only managed to push himself up on his elbow. The blast of light traveling in crackling arcs over his face made him too shocked to move. Lee stared in disbelief as Aaliyah's body shined a luminescent light. Dante stepped forward, and what used to be his arms were sickened lumps of meat that reverberated waves across his length. Lee said as he rolled, You got to be kidding me! Dante chuckled. <laughs> you can't kill me! I'm perfect! Perfect! Fool, my torture made you! And I'm gonna make sure all of you burn in hell! Lee saw Virgil cowering in the corner of the room and his rifle close by. He pushed himself up and ran. Dante shot forward his ugly hand, but Aaliyah bashed into it. The dictator of this fallen empire cried out in a shameful display. <laughs> Lee took up the gun and rolled into a shooting posture to fire two shots. They missed Dante's ugly mug when he pulled back into the darkness of the room. Lee reloaded, then pulled on Virgil's collar. Virgil wailed, but Lee wasn't going to have any argument right now. The young boy's presence here was going to be a liability. Aaliyah turned and followed Lee as they escaped from the room. Dante sent his arm sailing over her head and into the wall. Lee fired a shot into Dante's arms as Aaliyah ran around Lee. His enlarged arms swept the wall like a minesweeper, and fragments of the wall fell over Lee when he ducked. Dante came out into the hall on at least eight appendages. He wasn't a monster, but a nightmare 
that dripped blood in a sprinkling rain over Lee's back. A scourge of light hit Dante and he cried in pain as he stepped back. Lee reloaded the gun and aimed from the ground up into Dante's jawline. He fired and Dante bashed his fist into the ground, but Lee rolled out of the way. Aaliyah kept pushing Dante back. It was like the light overcame her as she got brighter. She looked like a pulsar and less like a human. She was losing it. Virgil must have realized and grabbed her around the neck. He turned and threw her onto the floor. Dante reached after her, but Virgil stood tall and waved his hands. The wall bent inward and the wall surface cracked as if pressure crushed it. Dante's hand stopped and suspended in front of Virgil. It could not pass whatever invisible force Virgil put up. Lee didn't waste any time and bashed the end of his rifle into Dante's head. Dante's head recoiled back. Lee spun the rifle, clutched it, and fired. Dante's body collapsed from the headshot, and Lee dropped. The body morphed and bulged like a billowing storm until it burst down the middle and sprayed its bloody payload onto the floor. The thudding of boots directed Lee's attention to Aaliyah running past him. Lee stood up as Virgil walked toward him. He stared into the room, darkened by a brooding presence. Lee stepped inside and followed behind her deep into the lab. Aaliyah pushed aside the tables and cabinets. No light cascaded over her skin anymore. She was just frantic. Whatever desire she harbored was within her heart, and a distant childlike cry stopped Lee cold as soon as he heard it. Yes, thank you! Virgil stayed behind Lee as they watched Aaliyah open a 15-foot chamber with transparent glass over its top. There were several of them, probably more than 20. All of them except the one Aaliyah tended to were empty. She pulled out a baby and clutched it close. So that's why she was so desperate to get back here. Lee and Virgil watched her silently turn into a child herself as she rocked the crying baby and mumbled gently. As far as the vials, she fished out two of them, which were see-through circular containers with blue liquid in a myriad of veins in the center. You should have told me, Lee said. Aaliyah's smile cracked into a more somber expression as her lips flattened. I didn't think you would do it for that reason. You got the vials, so your boss will be happy with that. Lee asked. Where are you planning to go? I'll figure it out. That's bull. Aaliyah, I never thought I would say this, but you need to trust people more. Aaliyah smiled and said, <sighs> You don't believe those words. True, but I want to. She nodded her head and said, I trust you. Who do you fly with? Rough Unchained. It's better than the open road, but when we get there, you'll be welcomed. Lee wasn't sure if what he did was the right thing or not. As he looked at Aaliyah and Virgil, or even the baby, he wanted to just get out of there for their safety. She got up with Virgil's help, and all of them trekked back to the base. It was going to be a rough future with all those vials out there, but at least they had their weapons, all three of them. Hey, sci-fi horror fans, it's John. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this story, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Craving another scary story? Click on that video on your screen. Until next time, everyone, and remember, stay cosmic.